Hello everyone, I'm David from Debolical, and welcome to the 2021 Indie of the Year results. After 10 days of top 100 voting, the results have been tallied, and it's now time to announce this year's winners. If you enjoy this roundup, be sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below what your favourite indies are for this year. It's been an incredible year for indie gaming, and while the top 10 winners are locked in, we want to take a moment to bring your attention and recognition to some games which just missed out. An honourable mention is given for polling strongly in the awards, but being ineligible due to placing higher in a previous year, or if a significant update was not released in 2021. 10th place goes to Vagrus, the Riven Realms. Embark on a perilous journey across a realm forsaken by the gods and devastated by an arcane cataclysm. Accompanied by a hardy crew, you are free to discover a dark fantasy world and its secrets. Trade, fight, or explore your way to success as the leader of a travelling company in Vagrus, a post-apocalyptic fantasy RPG strategy hybrid developed by Lost Pilgrim Studio. Ninth place goes to Game Deck. Game Deck is a single-player cyberpunk isometric RPG. You are a game detective who solves crimes inside virtual worlds. Use your wits to gather info from your witnesses and suspects, getting to the bottom of deceptive schemes. The game continually adapts to your decisions and never judges. Eighth place goes to Inscription. From the creator of Pony Island and the Hex comes the latest mind-melting, self-destructing love letter to video games. Inscription is an inky black card-based odyssey that blends the deck-building roguelike, escape room-style puzzles, and psychological horror into a blood-laced smoothie. Darker still are the secrets inscribed upon the cards. Seventh place goes to Dread Templar. Dread Templar is a new retro FPS inspired by 90s shooters like Quake 1, Blood, and tells the story of a demon hunter entering hell for revenge. Lots of classic elements such as key card secret areas, no health regeneration, and a large arsenal feature. Meanwhile, Dread Templar also has a modern skill-based FPS mechanic, such as powerful attack abilities, special movement abilities, and upgradable weapon systems. Sixth place goes to Rise of Humanity. Rise of Humanity is a strategic roguelike deck building game. You take control of a band of odd heroes who so far have survived a sentient AI's onslaught that started 50 years ago. They have discovered that the robots the AI used to do its bidding are getting weaker and now is the time to strike back. Each hero and enemy is controlled by a deck of cards. This deck gives your characters actions during a mission. Missions are procedural, so that no two encounters are ever the same. Fifth place goes to Solasta, Crown of the Magister. Created and written by lifelong fans of pen and paper RPGs comes Solasta, Crown of the Magister. Bring the authentic tabletop gaming experience to your PC. Roll for initiative, take attacks of opportunity, manage player location and the verticality of the battlefield. Set yourself up for the finishing strike and possibly roll a natural 20 at that key moment in the battle. Fourth place goes to Forgive Me Father. As the only one left with full senses, you embark on a journey in search of answers and relief in this FPS game that is created in a distinctive retro horror comic book style and feels as if it came straight out of Lovecraft's books. Be aware of your madness level, which dynamically changes during gameplay and gives you additional power. Choose your active skills depending on your playstyle and use them to fight against the eternal evil. Third place goes to the Forgotten City. Travel 2000 years into the past and relive the final days of a cursed Roman city, where if one person sins, everyone dies. Combat is an option, but violence will only get you so far. Only by questioning an intertwined community of colourful characters, cleverly exploiting the time loop, and making difficult moral choices, can you hope to solve this epic mystery. Here, your decisions matter. The fate of the city is in your hands. In second place comes Hedon Bloodright. Hedon Bloodright merges Hedon 1 and 2 into an entirely handcrafted 20 plus hours single player experience, 
inspired by not only the best retro FPS games of the 90s, but also games like Ark's Fatalis and Thief. Hedon mixes high octane action with exploration and puzzle solving, creating a challenge that encourages creativity and wit. Finally, our first place winner for Indie of the Year 2021 is Chernobylite, a science fiction survival horror RPGs from developers Farm 51. Set in the hyper-realistic, 3D scanned wasteland of Chernobyl's explosion zone, you'll take on the role of Igor, a physicist and ex-employee of the Chernobyl power plant, returning to Pripyat to investigate the mysterious disappearance of his fiance 30 years prior. With such raw attention to detail and fantastic atmosphere, it's no wonder the players enjoyed this deep dive into the ominous horrors lurking in Chernobyl. A huge congratulations are in order to all the indie developers and community voters for participating in the 2021 Indie of the Year Awards. Also, a special thanks to Tripwire Presents once again for sponsoring this year's awards. IndieDB would like to wish you all the best for your continued indie developmental efforts through to 2022. I'm David from Debolical, and Happy New Year! We'll see you in January.